Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer, and today we're going to be analyzing Berkshire Hathaway stock, uh, Berkshire B. Um, this is going to be a unique video where I kind of share um, what I think is a pretty good shortcut for investors when trying to figure out um, what a good price to buy a Berkshire Hathaway stock is. So it's going to be quite different than most of my other videos. Um, this one came in by request down in the comment section of one of those other videos um, and it took me a little while to figure out how I wanted to go about analyzing Berkshire. Um, if you have a stock you would like me to analyze on the channel just drop it down in the comment section I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me and eventually I'll make a video. Um, if it's a stock that's in the S&P 500 like Berkshire is I post those on YouTube for free and the rest I post on Patreon, which is $5 a month, and in the full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha. Um, in the full service, um, I have chat room where you can chat with me, direct message me. I have my stra other strategies that I don't talk about um, in public explained, and then really just dozens and dozens of articles that aren't available to the public. You also get access to um, I think I'm around 500 articles on Seeking Alpha now, so you can go back and read any other articles that I've written in the past, over the past, um, let's see, I'm on my ninth year now um, analyzing stocks over on Seeking Alpha. So um, if you do join Patreon for that five bucks a month, you get a big discount to the full Cyclical Investors Club service if you decide to join there. Um, and those links will be down in the description. Um, I'm also going to be using the Fast Graphs uh, graphing service here. And I have a 25% off link down there in the description for that as well. Um, it definitely helps. Uh, Berkshire's a little tricky one to use using earnings, which is why I'm gonna kind of show everybody the shortcut. Um, but it definitely helps sift through a lot of stocks, which is what I like to do. I have an unconcentrated portfolio, which means I have to make very quick decisions on which stocks are worth me following and which ones aren't. Um, and Fast Graphs really helps with that. So. Um, let's get into the analysis. As always, this isn't individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. Um, okay, Berkshire. So I, um, I always like to kind of start off by talking about any kind of history I've had, either writing about, analyzing, owning um, a stock. I think Berkshire's fantastic. I first bought it in 2016. Um, I think it was for my daughter's account, actually. It might have been for my Roth. I can't remember. But um, I went back and checked these dates to see when it was I was actually buying. So I bought three or four different times. One of them was, I'm just going to get rid of that, um, was in early 2016. And then I bought again um, in multiple accounts in mid-2018 during this kind of mid-2018 decline here. And then again, I started the Cyclical Investors Club service in 20, January of 2019. And so we were able to buy it in the service um, about halfway through this 2020 decline. I think it was right in there, if I remember correctly, um, in the service. And I added more to my account then. Um, so and I there may have been a couple times I kind of added to along the way. But those were the big those are the big ones that um, stood out. So I've done a pretty good job buying on the dips. I haven't bought any since 20 um, since 2020. So going on about four years now. Um, and whenever anybody asks me, you know, I'm starting, I want to give my grandkids some stock or get them started investing or my kids or, or whoever, um, or even just anybody just starting off themselves. Um, usually I, the first thing I say is buy Berkshire, you know, especially if you're buying for someone else's account um, or to gifting to somebody, it doesn't pay a dividend, which is great because there's no taxes involved until you sell the stock. So um, Berkshire is really designed to be like an ever growing kind of piggy bank savings account. Um, and you could, it's really a hands off type of a thing. So you can, you can invest and 30 years later, your kids can sell their Berkshire if they need to, or use it however they want. Um, they don't really have to do anything in between. Um, so it's just a fantastic vehicle. Um, for that and many, many other, and just a regular fantastic investment. But in terms of like just dollar cost averaging or not looking too much at like valuations or doing any of that, Berkshire is the, just the easiest, simplest way. I think every account that's buying an individual stock should start off with Berkshire. So that's my overall feeling. And anybody that, that really tries to criticize 
um, Buffett or any of the leadership, I think, at Berkshire, it says more about the person doing their critiquing that they they than it does Berkshire. I'll just leave it at that. Because um, occasionally there'll be phases where there's a lot of negative press for some reason on, on Berkshire, usually about the time the market dissolves or collapses or something. So um, now, in terms of doing evaluation analysis on Berkshire, it's extremely difficult. There are people on the internet that, that are longtime Berkshire holders that specialize in this, and it's kind of like a fun game for them to play, I think, or a process, I guess, for them to go through. But for just regular average investors, um, it can be really tricky because Berkshire has, well, they have an insurance company, they have float that that creates, they have wholly owned businesses, um, and then they have pub partial ownership of public businesses, and then maybe a couple partnerships in there. So to go through and really try to figure out like a valuation is pretty difficult. Um, and FastGraphs does use the adjusted operating earnings, which I think is probably the easiest metric to use. And you do see like a general flow here of Berkshire's share price with those adjusted earnings. But um, so the way I used to do this is I would go and take Berkshire's wholly owned business earnings that they report. I usually only do this like once a year or two, like right after the annual report came out, which it just did. So um, figure out what they earned, then go and figure out Berkshire's, how much Berkshire owned of their bigger public holdings as a percentage of those holdings, and how much of the earnings of those business that would entitle Berkshire to, and then uh, subtract out any dividends that Berkshire collected from those businesses. And what was left would be kind of Berkshire's earnings plus the look-through earnings. And then you also have to take into account the cash that they hold. Um, and when you do all that, you can kind of get a decent valuation, right? So, but it's, it's relatively cumbersome to do. And especially throughout the year when it, we just get the quarterly reports and stuff after the, the big one. So I would usually just do it once a year and kind of roughly adjust it. But the good news is Berkshire rarely trades like super expensively. I, in my opinion, it hasn't ever been overvalued except for in like 1998, 1999, really that 1998 time frame. Um, and pretty much any other time, you're probably going to get about a fair valuation or to a very good valuation when you buy it. So it's now that might not always be the case. It, there could be another period where Berkshire just goes to the moon, but for the most part, um, it hasn't gotten too overvalued for whatever reason. The market just doesn't ever give Berkshire like the full credit, or doesn't often give them the full credit that they deserve, to some degree, at least historically. So. Um, I'm going to show you a shortcut. So, and the way, what I realized was over time after studying Berkshire for a very long time, um, that Warren Buffett really aims for about an, once Berkshire was huge, like it is now, and you're not going to, as Bar as Warren wrote in the recent shareholder letter, the eye popping returns probably aren't going to come. But Ber as far as I can tell, Buffett really targets like an 8% um, earnings growth plus inflation. So, and you can see it when people come to borrow money from him. Usually he'll get eight or nine, eight to 10% interest, and then plus often um, options like warrants. So you get that extra boost in case um, maybe inflation eats away or you just the business really turns around and so he has an extra kicker kind of at the end usually on those structured deals and then when you look at what he buys usually he's i mean he wants to get things as cheap as possible but you know if someone offers him a business and he shoots him back a price he knows in his mind what sort of return he thinks he can get out of that longer term and generally my observation has been about eight percent plus inflation which if you assume inflation is three percent now it might not always be, it could be four, it could be, this is over a longer period of time, um, but the past decade, it's been about 3%. It looks like right now, 3% is a reasonable expectation and then longer term, 3% is about right too. So three to 4%. Um, so you take 8% and 3%, that's 11% um, annual return. 
So that's, but it's it's really 8% plus inflation, but for practical purposes right now, this particular point in time, we can think of it as like 11. Um, so what that can allow us to do, if we can just identify one point in time where Berkshire had a pretty reasonable valuation, which I've done to be about 2015, the beginning of 2015, where it was about $150 per share. Um, what we can do when we make that assumption, if we think that they can be successful getting close to this target of 8% plus inflation, then what you can do, and you think this is a reasonable starting point, you can look if you have just like a fast graph like this, but you can, I'll show you how to do it um, with uh, just a Kager calculator here in a minute too. Um, you can go and whenever Berkshire it has, you go a few years into the future, which we already are now if you start in 2015, so you don't need to worry about it. But if you go a few years into the future and Berkshire is earning under that 8% plus inflation, which we'll call 11% annually, then it's probably a little undervalued depending on how far below that it is. And then if it's above that, it's probably a little overvalued, you know, depending on how far it is to that 11%. Now, for me, I, I want to have a little bit of a margin of safety when I buy anything, including Berkshire, plus you get a little bonus return if you do, can do that. So I think about an, an 8% is kind of the level if it's below an eight percent return then that's kind of a level where you get a little margin of safety it'll probably eventually get up to that 11 percent annual return so you get a little bonus from that and then after that you know you can kind of get that eight percent plus inflation hopefully um and if they don't and they get like six percent plus inflation or five percent like an eight percent return is about five percent plus inflation three percent inflation so even if they only got like um, that you would still be okay. Like you still be getting like decent returns, right? Um, long term, the market's maybe like six percent plus inflation. So I think that's a good level to aim for. That's generally what I aim for with a lot of other things that I do different calculations for. Um, so if we look at when I bought in mid twenty eighteen, which I think was about the first week of July. Um, we can see what Berkshire looked like then. So that had been about three year, three and a half years from the starting date. So enough, enough time, you know, it's not a super long amount of time. Now you're going to have like a 10 year average, which will be better. But we see that it was well under 8%. We were at 6.75% Kager. Um, so that would have been a good, good buy. And it did turn out to be a good buy. I mean, um, now this wasn't the super cheap, time I was able to get it down here at 125 or so but there are these times so let's just see what the returns would have been so we would have gotten a 14% 14 14.34% kager from then until now which is a significant period of time right it's um uh, one two three four five six years or something like that maybe it says up here I don't know um so very good very good return and then again in 2020 about halfway through that decline well, actually, let me check. Um, let's go back to 2015. I'm going to do this a couple times so people can see it. And we say, okay, it's mid-COVID decline right here, about mid-March. This isn't at the very bottom. And you look and you say, okay, well, this is well below 8%. That probably means Berkshire's undervalued with a margin of safety. Um, and so that was that purchase. So if you would have purchased then which we actually did in the Cyclical Investors Club, you'd be over 100% return right now. So, and almost a 20% Kager over four years. So not too bad at all, right? Now, th these positions were purchased well below the 8% that I was talking about. So let's see if we can find one that is closer to the actual 8%, maybe after this bump here, I'm just going to randomly pick it and see. So that's seven. So that's still pretty cheap. Let's see if we were willing to pay a little bit more. Maybe here. Still under eight. I'm going to find one. Or maybe going in. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we'll try to get one pre COVID and see what happens then. So that's 8.7. So we want to pay a little bit less than that.
still a little under. Or that one was a little too much under. There we go. Okay. November 1st, we're just under that 8%, and you're like, okay, I've been watching this. Usually Berkshire can earn 11. They've only been, the market's only pricing them at 8 over this time period. So we'll go to, there you go, November um, 1st, 2019, and you hold through today, and you get a 15%, a very good 15% kicker. Um, so you can kind of just see how it works. So now the question is, where is Berkshire at today? <laughs> It's had a it had a pretty big spike here, and I haven't had it as a buy during this time at all. And now we have this other spike that it looks like it's coming down off of. So let's go back to the 2015. Let's see where it's at today. Okay, so it's over 11. So it'd be a little overvalued probably, right, at the price that it's at right now. Um, and then we can see as this line goes across here, it was probably overvalued there as well, which ended up being a little mini peak. Let's take a look at it real quick and just see. So yeah, quite overvalued. So you could see like, okay, this this wouldn't be a good time to buy it. I mean, I don't I don't ever sell Berkshire, so it's not expensive enough to sell, but um, it's you know good enough. Okay, so Berkshire's a little expensive. So when do we buy Berkshire? Right? When could we calculate that? Well, if you go to Money Chimp. Um, moneychimp.com they have a little kager calculator here so from 2015 through about march which is march 2024 which is when i'm recording this we're at um 9.25 years okay and we started at about 150 dollars in 2015 right now we're at about 405 that's that 11 percent kager 11.35 we just saw so that all works out um what you want to know is, well, when would this get to about eight or, or under eight? And if you go down to 305, you can see that that's where it would fall under eight. So if Berkshire's price falls to $305, it would be a buy. Um, now this will change as time goes on and the years tick up as the years go by. So this price would probably rise over time. Um, and we can, but you can do this calculation very, very, very simply. Um, apologize for the um, alert system that we have here in town that they're testing right now. Um, so let's see here. So I think that's really all I wanted to show. That that Berkshire buy price is about three hundred and five dollars right now. You can just do that Kager calculation from twenty fifteen. It will give you a good estimate on you know. And you can, people can make their own mind up too if maybe a 9% um, is good enough for them. But I think that 8%, those opportunities come along um, regularly. I mean, they're not like every month, but let's see if this bottom here would have fallen under there. Yep. So as recently as um, September of 2022, you could have gotten it under that 8% kegger. And we can see what the returns are since then. So the return, again, is a 32% Kager, 50% return in a year and something, right? So it would have been a good time to buy. But importantly, you wouldn't have missed out on that opportunity. So every few years, usually every two years or so, you get the opportunity to buy it. It's a pretty regular opportunity. And, you know, it can, bo it can boost your returns compared to somebody that bought up near this peak, right? So they would have only gotten a 6.86% return compared to the 32 like a four times weaker return or you would have got a four times stronger return just using this little simple metric so i hope that helps everybody out um if you enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button normally my um analysis are very different than for berkshire but i thought this would be a good trick for everybody um that pretty much anybody can use um and then there's never any question about berkshire's quality and management and all that kind of stuff so um, I'll see everybody later. Bye.